Hello, this is Leslie Walker Hirsch for Glass Alliance New Mexico and today I have the great pleasure of speaking with the one and only Judy Tuella Siwa from <laughs> Galisteo, New Mexico. Judy is an artist, lecturer, writer and teacher who works in many media. Judy, hello, how are you today? I'm great, Leslie. How are you? I'm really well, especially that our internet connection is working. So let me get started. <laughs> I have a couple of questions here. Uh, tell me, um, how would you describe your own artwork? How would I describe my own artwork? Let me think for a second. Um, I've worked in different media over the years. Uh, presently, however, I'm working with glass, kiln-fired glass. And it is synthesizing many concepts that I've worked with before. So the mediums that I have worked with have been words, language in the books that I've done, and fiber, very important to me. I receive a lot of inspiration from, from nature but from many different places. Um, paint, I have painted for years. And I have worked with concepts that have to do a lot with the woundedness that we inherit from generations and as human beings. And with healing that woundedness, with moving towards wholeness. So they're the materials themselves that I, that I see on a par with any thought that I've had. It's a kind of collaboration with the materials and the collaboration with glass because of the, the way that silica is formed seems to hold both geologic time, it holds metaphorical time. It's just such a rich material to have found at this point in my life. And so glass, inspired you to, the, the nature of glass itself inspired you to want to work with glass? Yes, it's the actual, it's the actual way the glass is formed by, you know, you have a rock. It takes a long time for the rock to form, to come up from inside the earth. Um, and then that rock over millions of years slowly is weathered by these natural forces that form all of us, um, both, again, metaphorically and realistically, into silica that then is put through fire again to become glass. It's such a remarkable process. It truly is. And um, so what are the inspirations for your subject matter? We see that the materials have inspired you, but what events in your life yes. or in life inspire you to create your art? Um, I had no idea I was an artist. <laughs> and I had, I had studied English literature in college. I loved it. I loved it a lot. And I also was a mother with quite a few children. And I went to a Van Gogh exhibit, a large Van Gogh exhibit that was traveling around the country. This was back in the 1970s. 1970, actually, I believe. And it was, I was in San Francisco and saw the exhibit. And by the end of, exhi the, end of the exhibit, something had happened to me. I was sobbing so hard I couldn't stop. Something opened in me. And years later, I read that, that Van Gogh had written to his brother, Theo, that he hoped that his work would open the wellsprings of a person's heart. And that's what had happened to me. And it inspired me, so I began doing art. And I really began with no knowledge, other than having spent years at museums. I have always loved art. But something opened in me, my unconscious flooded me. And art has been a way of containing that material that came up so intensely, almost violently, that that exhibit brought, brought out of me. The, and from that moment on, I have known the power of art and the power of the image to transform us. And at the heart of my work is that, the power of the image to transform us, not just me, 
but universally. And so, and and also, it's also been the power of the image to heal us in that transformation. And so, the various things that inspire me, it might be a Salvation Army Santa on Fifth and Fifty Fourth Street, a man, a middle aged man who's tired, who's had a hard life, who's ringing his golden bell. <laughs> it might be sitting in Chaco Canyon, watching the sunrise. It it runs the gamut. I never know when a moment is going to happen that becomes an epiphany that allows me to see something much more than myself. And it so, gives me a, 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 a vision. So once you have that vision, then what happens? How does that become art? That's well, for example, right now, it's true. Right now, no, it's a good question. Right now, what's happening in the studio is there was a piece that I fired last night. It's a 24 by 40 by 36 inches. Big it's one. a simple, slight, slightly pink piece. And I started to pull it out this morning and it cracked down the center. And then I thought, that's good. I'm glad it broke. This is this is better than the wholeness that it had that I had planned. And so then I found some, um, some bisque clay pieces that I had been working with, and I laid them underneath it. And now I'm firing it again to see what will happen. That's how it becomes art, is I have an idea, I begin with the idea, and then it takes on its own life. And I have to trust that meaning will be formed out of that life that it takes on and that we then share with each other. I, I feel with the materials that, well, that they are not dead. They are as alive, that matter is alive. And my job is to work with those materials to allow their voice to be heard as much as my voice. Well, you certainly... And so the art... You it, certainly So basically have the, the art... Go. <laughs> what, what, you go. Go, go, go. No, 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 you go. <laughs> this is great. So, so the materials uh, express what you are experiencing, and hopefully the viewer of your art will also have a, an experience that helps them to heal as well. It's, it's like to, to become more whole. Uh, there was a wonderful collector, of Ed Broida, and I once asked Ed, Ed, why do you buy a work? And Ed was a major art collector. He had some amazing pieces in his collection. And he said to me, when I stand before a piece and my heart opens in a new way, that's when I want to live with that piece. And I said, well, that's very interesting because that's what happens to artists when we're working. Amazing. That when, when, that, that when my heart opens in a new way, because a piece has taught me something, that's when I know that piece is alive. So Judy, if a person wanted to contact you or find out more about your art and your visionary insights, how would they go about that? Or even to commission a piece from you, if you do that. Thank you, Leslie. Yes, yes I do. And when I when commission, I give people the right of first refusal. They can say no, because of course, I'll work with the person, but then I have to take it the way that the materials want me to also take it. So that's when I have done commissions, it's always with that understanding that it's complete. If it does not speak to that, then they don't have to take it. But people can contact me through my website, judytowalletstewa.com. All the information is on my website. Well, that's wonderful. And thank you for taking some time out of your day to talk to, to me and to the readers and viewers of Glass Alliance New Mexico. Thanks so much, Judy. Bye-bye now. Thank you, Leslie.